When you think about a data team, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Maybe you think about a single group of developers with some QA or IT support, but the truth is today, the lines of what consists of a data team are starting to become a little blurred. Modern data engineering has evolved into a much more continuous and collaborative endeavor spanning across multiple teams. Data today is now viewed more like a product, kind of like you would consider a traditional software application. And because of this general shift, new approaches for building and releasing data products have continued to evolve as well. And so a term that's often used to describe this new workflow is data ops. And in today's video, I'm going to break down the three biggest trends in this world of data ops to help you feel a little bit more aware and confident working in this new way. Topic number one should come as really no surprise, and that is automation. Rather than just focusing on writing ad hoc queries or building reports, we as engineers are now expected to develop in an environment surrounded by automation and continuous activity. A main area where you'll see this impact is with testing and deployments. The trend towards more code-based tools and version control not only makes development more fun, at least in my opinion, but it really enables testing and development to be automated and run through just a few simple commands. Examples of where you might see this actually implemented are through GitHub Actions or GitLab pipelines, where you can build automated workflows directly tied to your project code. This approach means more continuous development testing and deployment as opposed to maybe a more rigid schedule of deployments and some ad hoc testing. In addition to the project testing and deployment, your entire infrastructure can also now be automated. Open source tools like Terraform allow you to keep your entire infrastructure as code and then automatically edit and spin up new environments however you need. For example, you can have your entire Snowflake code written in code and automatically deployed through Terraform. This has a ton of benefits, one of which obviously is just removing the need to manually change anything on Snowflake itself. Another major topic in this area is containerization. And this is where you'll start to see names like Docker and Kubernetes come into play. Containers allow you to quickly recreate a very specific environment setup and can also be added to your automated workflows that we mentioned before. And I plan on diving into this topic a little bit more in a separate video, but the thing to know is that you can get really creative with how you use containers with your testing and deployment, which allows you to automate things that previously would have been unheard of. The last one in this section is scheduling. And this topic obviously has been around for a while, but is becoming way more advanced rather than only being part of an existing tool. Let's say, for example, SQL Server Agent. We now see entire tools dedicated just to scheduling. Examples include Airflow, Luigi, Jenkins, or you can build your own custom Python script to kick off tools if you want. But a lot of this is possible, again, due to that shift towards more code-based tools where things can be initiated really by just basic commands. Next up is integration. You know, so many tools nowadays are cloud-based and purposely designed for connectivity and integration. As an engineer, part of our work is now heavily focused on making sure the different platforms being used in the stack are able to properly work together. This leads to the first topic in this area, which is triggers. The trend in the data world lately has been to have multiple individual tools for specific purposes, rather than maybe one major tool that does it all. And while each individual part is now, I guess, better, the downside is that they don't all talk to each other unless you specifically tell them to. I like to think of it kind of like an engineer in a physical manufacturing facility. Just like that type of engineer makes sure all the machines are working together and in the right order, so too do we as data engineers need to be sure that our digital machines, I guess, are working together correctly as well. So you can expect a big part of the job to be setting up triggers within a workflow or between tools to make sure everything runs smoothly. The second subtopic here is alerting. We've talked about all the automation going on and that means there's a lot more happening behind the scenes and we can't always be there to monitor it in person. So whether it's just letting you know a job has successfully run or if there's maybe an unexpected errors, engineers must be able to put systems in place to provide immediate alerting and have that information integrated across all of the different tools. A simple example is having an integration between the scheduling tool, let's say Airflow and a team communication tool like Slack. We can set things up so that the Airflow results are automatically communicated 
in Slack and we don't have to check uh, manually or wait on some sort of automated email to let us know. The last point I'll make here is to, again, drive home that idea that the modern data stack has evolved from one or two primary tools for all functions to a collection of many tools each with a specific focus. It might feel overwhelming at first, but this is where we get to actually build things. And it can really be one of the more rewarding aspects of the job when you see these integrations actually work the way you intended it to. The third and final major trend in this area is collaborations. As the scope and complexity of all of our data pipelines continue to evolve, the ownership of the different parts are now spreading across teams within an organization. It's not just staying within one single data team. For example, in large companies, it's pretty common that you may have one team just for reporting, one for automation, and then one separately for data modeling, things like that. So being able to understand and work in that type of environment is really important because you'll need to be able to collaborate with many more people to achieve a goal. I will say this can be a bit of an adjustment if you're used to owning it all within a small team and not really having to rely on any outside group to get the job done. So common examples here could include uh, coordinating development dependencies, release schedules, or just letting other teams know if there are new issues found during your development. Next, expect more direct feedback and support from your stakeholders. Business stakeholders are becoming way more data literate, which means they're going to want to be more involved in the decision making and in making suggestions. And as mentioned in the previous point, stakeholders can now also very likely be other development teams because they too will be directly impacted by what you build. The main point here is to just be prepared to work in a way more collaborative and fluid environment as opposed to kind of traditionally hiding behind that mysterious black box of development. The last subtopic here is around the concepts of data dictionaries and data lineage. People have always asked obviously for logic definitions, but again, that growing complexity of the data pipelines that we're building now makes this task more of a group effort. To get this right requires collaborations between the teams to sync everything together and just make sure the definitions and the lineage are as accurate as possible. A lot of new tools, for example, DBT, now have some of these concepts built in, but there are other ways obviously to accomplish the same idea. You could do uh, shared document sites, a custom hosted website, maybe have an internal wiki, uh, there's a few ways that you can do that. And there's a few different tools designed specifically for making this process better. In general, it's important to consider documentation as part of the development process rather than something that's an afterthought or kind of a nice to have. Modern data engineering is really an exciting field and full of a lot of new trends to keep an eye on. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you next week.